Okay, folks, welcome back. And uh, what you're looking at there is the uh, very forward rib. Actually, it's uh, the first uh, station after that bulkhead right there. But um, I've got four of these that I've been talking about in these videos. Um, let's just see. And we got that one and that one. This one, uh, for this position right here, I've got it laid out, getting ready to mark out uh, the locations for these lightning holes and I'm just using the uh, rib that goes in this very aft location right here for a template and uh, just to save me a little bit of time and then I've also got a three and a half inch uh, hole saw that I'm going to use to cut a couple of more lightning holes in between uh, the, the center and the outboard slot and this is center slot, this is outboard. Let's see if I can get the camera back far enough so you can see that. Um, but I'm going to put two holes in between these two slots on each side. And as you can see right here, this is what I did. It worked out very well actually. And all I've got to do is drill three more ribs just like that one. And uh, so this is uh, the second one right here that I'm, I'm getting ready to mark off and uh, cut out right now and um, I'm not going to set the camera up and, and show the whole hole boring process there because I think you know, most of you watching this have probably drilled a hole or have used a hole saw before. I will talk a little bit about the tools that I'm using though and if you're going to do something like this invest in tools invest in good quality tools and I just went and got these uh, size specific uh, hole saws from Home Depot and uh, these are good sturdy metal saws and uh, I would recommend going with these. I had some of those little flexible sheet metal uh, hole saws, a uh, little cheaper ones and uh, they kind of use uh, uh, like a little universal arbor and uh, then you just get the different size uh, saws and, and slip them in that arbor and as a matter of fact, I might have that over here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These right here. And as you can see, they kind of flex a little bit. They're a little flimsy. They're okay for um, certain projects, but I just didn't want to use these on this project here. So I just went out and invested in uh, some good tooling. So that's where we're at and uh, I'll get back to you once I get done uh, getting these holes drilled up and then we'll see waiting on the weather like I said in the last video we're gonna um, see what the weather does hopefully uh, you know, that little cold snap won't last too long we'll be able to get out here and get these bonded in and then move on to the outer skin see you next segment okay one thing I did forget to mention in that previous segment uh, when you're measuring and marking off the locations for these holes just be aware of the outside diameter of your hole saw so that when you go to drilling you're not getting too close to one of these edges or even too close to one of these edges as you can see right here I am leaving plenty of room that's about two inches right there I'm leaving plenty of room in between adjacent holes and in between the edges of the slots and in between the uh, edges of the rib itself so just be aware of that and uh, you know draw it out and uh, you know don't be afraid to make changes if you have to okay see you next segment two down two to go I'll be right back and Three down, one to go. Oh boy, almost there. Man, this is a marathon. All right, next segment. Okay, and just like that, all four are done. We've got all these lightning holes cut, as you can see here. And uh, in case you're wondering, I'm doing that to reduce some of the weight, uh, the plywood does tend to be a little bit heavier than say an aluminum boat or just a pure fiberglass boat and so I'm doing that just to try to cut down on some weight and uh, by my best estimate 
it should save me about 15 pounds. And you think, well, you know, that's not a whole lot, you know, 15, 18 pounds. Uh, but you know, when you consider that uh, gasoline is like six pounds per gallon, well, that's uh, three extra gallons of gasoline I can carry for the outboard. Or, you know, that's another you know, 15 to 18 pounds of gear I can carry. So every little bit does make a difference. And uh, so that's the reason for the lightning holes. And um, all I have to do now, get over here where the light's a little bit better. I don't know how well you can see those channels right there. I just take a little rat, rat tail file and I cut these little channels right here. And that's for the epoxy to flow through so that it goes through all the way and adheres to uh, all the, uh, the plies in the plywood. And I've just got to come down here and do the same thing. That's easy. That, that, that's, that won't take me any time at all to do that. Uh, we're over the hump now. We, we got the, uh, the major part of the job done. So once I get those little, little uh, grooves cut for the epoxy to flow into, uh, we'll be ready to bond this in. We're gonna check the weather, see if maybe I can get this done get this all done ahead of uh, those cold fronts that are coming in this week. So uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. And uh, hopefully if I get that done, I'll get back to you in the next segment. Okay, so I was sitting in my chair here last night and got to looking at this boat and realized I have not yet addressed the bow of the boat. I still need to make a piece to go and connect the... Uh, the keel beam and the stringers up here at the bow and so we're going to start on that and the reason for all these clamps in this 2 by right here is because this this uh, keel beam forward of the bulkhead had a had a nice little curve to it there remember I said you know we don't live in a perfect world so plywood's not perfectly straight all right so um, had to go take a few little measurements here and make sure we got everything uh, lined up with the center line. In particular, I had to get the center line of the keel, the forward end of the keel beam here, lined up with the center line of the rest of the boat. And so even after I got uh, this little straight edge piece clamped in place, I had to move the whole assembly over uh, this way a little bit, kind of this way. And I'm working in this bright sunlight with this camera again. But uh, I've got everything now lined up. I uh, double checked my measurement between the bulkhead and the stern and uh, the measurement from here to the uh, stern. It's exactly the same. It is spot on on both sides. 108 and quarter inches on both sides. So I know that um, that bulkhead is sitting nice and square to the stern and uh, I was able to use the bulkhead then this measurement from here to here to make sure we had everything on the uh, on center and same thing over here I'm over here and took a measurement from here to here and 61 and a quarter on both sides nice perfect little triangle so I will get back to you when I get ready to start making that piece Papa! and that's my grandson telling me hi we'll catch you next segment Okay, so I have one side of this bow piece made. I guess we'll just call it the nose section. As you can see, because of the uh, point and because this is a V bow, I have to make these in two pieces. The trick is going to be making one that's a mirror image of this one for the other side and getting it to look like it was uh, done by somebody that knows what they're doing. And I shall do my best. I'll be back to you. Um, hopefully once we get to the other side made. We just had a cold front come through. And it is getting super duper cold out here. So maybe I'll get this done tonight. Maybe I won't. We shall see. It's not up to me. It's up to the good Lord and, and the thermometer. Uh, more to come. Okay. I'm back. I actually got these two pieces made. And what I did was I just used the first piece as a template and uh, just repeated all the angles just had to make sure to reverse everything but that's uh, gonna be for the nose of the boat right here and I'm gonna try to set this camera up on the hood of my truck and just kind of show you give you an idea of uh, how they're going to attach and I'll probably just bond them with a the thickened epoxy I'll 
figure out a way to um, set those in place. Uh, it won't be much of a challenge. I'll be right back as soon as I get this camera set up. All right, so since I don't have three hands and four arms, this is the best way I know how to do it. I got this set up on the hood of my truck. And I'm just going to kind of mock these up in place and just kind of show you what I've been working on this afternoon. And um, as soon as I get the right and the left one figured out. Okay, here we go. Just like that. I'll step out of the way there so you can kind of see what we got going on. And that. Whoops. Let's zoom that back out. Okay. And that, my friends, that's the bow of my boat. And uh, once I get that attached, I'll get those ribs in and. Uh, and yeah, weather's fixing to shut us down here, so uh, it might be a few days before I get back to you, but until then, um, just uh, hang tight and uh, we'll get her done. Okay, welcome back. I did not get the chance to bond those ribs in like I was hoping to. Uh, the bottom dropped out of the thermometer too fast. It started getting cold really, really quick. We have an Arctic front uh, pushing its way through the Fort Worth area. Weather forecast for Monday, uh, it, it is now uh, Thursday night, but the weather forecast for Monday, three degrees. Folks, that's three degrees Fahrenheit. That is our forecast for Monday morning here in Fort Worth. This ain't Canada, folks. Oh boy, I could hardly wait. Uh, actually, yeah, I can. I don't even know if I have clothing for three degrees, my goodness. But anyway, I just want to go ahead and get into the devotional segment. Um, now in past videos in the devotional segments, I've spoken about the importance of having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and how important it is to ask him uh, to come into your life and, and cleanse you of your sins, to be your savior. And that is very important. Uh, and I've talked to uh, numerous people that say they know God. Uh, I've talked to people said, you know, I, well, I believe in God, and you know, they say they even pray to God. But when I've asked about their relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's kind of where you start getting a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit of a, a variety of answers. Um, you, you don't always get the same answer from people. Um, sometimes, yes, they do want to know more about Christ, and then that opens a door for you to share the gospel with them. And then there are those people, uh, you know, who say they, you know, they, they don't really want to know more about Christ. They're content with the knowledge that they have of God, and they believe they're just fine without really understanding that uh, even though they're acknowledging God, they say they worship God, uh, their knowledge is really incomplete. And an incomplete knowledge of God is, is not a saving knowledge of, of, of God. Now, the Bible... Uh, it does not specifically mention the word Trinity, but it's evident in Scripture that there is one true God who exists in three manifestations, or as we say in the church, in three persons. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And you can't know God fully if you have no knowledge of the Son, Jesus, or of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible does speak of instances in which people were described as devout worshipers of God, but they did not know about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And one of those instances is found in the book of Acts in chapter 10, where we're told about a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius. Now, Cornelius, uh, we're told, was a devout man of God, and, and he, he worshiped God, and, and he made offerings to God at the uh, Jewish temples. But he had really no knowledge of Jesus Christ. And actually, i probably more accurate to say, he did not know who Jesus was. So his knowledge of God was incomplete. But however, um, God had mercy on him. And uh, in his great mercy, God helped Cornelius to connect the dots, so to speak. In a vision, an angel appeared to Cornelius. 
who told him to send for Simon Peter. Now we all know who Simon Peter was. You know, he was one of uh, uh, Jesus' uh, disciples, uh, one of the inner circle. Uh, but anyway, uh, the angel told uh, Cornelius, Cornelius to send for Simon Peter. Uh, Simon's over in a, a nearby town. Now around that same time frame, Peter also had a vision. Now he was told to go with the men uh, who were sent to him by Cornelius, and he had another vision. And in that vision, Peter saw uh, what's described as a sheep being lowered down from heaven. And it was full of all sorts of animals that God said were okay to eat. And of course, you know, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Jewish law, you know, they had all these dietary restrictions and they had this list of clean and unclean animals. But in this vision, God said that uh, all animals were, were clean. And he specifically told Peter, do not declare anything uh, common that God has made clean. And so not only did God lift the dietary restrictions that had been so much a part of the Jewish religion, Peter also understood, uh, he, he interpreted that vision to mean that uh, the gospel was meant to be shared with Jew and Gentile alike. And so Peter went to Cornelius's house and uh, he told Cornelius and everyone there about Jesus and he told them about the cross and about the resurrection and how the only way to be saved is through uh, faith in Jesus Christ. And everyone in Cornelius's house believed and they were saved. And you know, folks, that's just the way of God. If anyone has a true desire to know God and to know him completely, now I'm not saying to, to, to know everything there is to know about God, uh, what I'm talking about is knowing uh, uh, God and knowing uh, what he has revealed about himself through uh, his word, through the Bible. If anyone has a desire to know God completely in that sense, God will see to it that the message of the gospel reaches that person. And knowledge, any knowledge of God without knowledge of Jesus and or of the Holy Spirit is an incomplete knowledge. But, you know, there is good news. And I always say, it's the good news of the gospel. It's the good news of God's mercy, his grace. If you truly want to know God, he will make sure that someone comes to you. He will make your, your knowledge of him complete. And that is the message from Acts chapter 10. And, uh, uh, this is a little bit shorter devotional, and that's because it's cold. It's in the 30s out here. So, folks, um, behave, be blessed, and it's time for me to go back inside and get warmed up. And uh, hopefully once the weather uh, starts to warm back up, we can get back on this boat. For right now, uh, the project is on hold, but I will see you soon. And thank you for watching.